at a strong tower that can never be shaken. A strong tower that can never be shaken. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 11. What is a strong tower? Why does God want us to have the strong tower? <coughs> strong tower. The wealth of the rich is their fortified seat, they imagine it an scalable wall. The rich man's wealth is his strong seat and is as high wall in his own conceit. Amen. Today, before I also preach, I want us to pray for a young lady by the name of Liko. Uh, she's expecting, we prayed for her last week here. But this morning, she was rushed to the hospital. And uh, I just want us to reach out. Let's stretch our hands wherever she is, God, to touch her right now. Father, we bring Liko in your hands. And we ask you, God, right now to touch her and to bring total deliverance. God, there's no distance in prayer. Anthony and Liko right now, they're going through some difficult moment. We ask you right at this moment, oh God, make Liko whole in Jesus' name. Amen. What is a strong tower? What is a strong tower? A strong tower, or a tower is a strong structure and it can stand the wall. It doesn't need any support. A tower occupies a commanding position. We all know the 911 what happened when those towers came down? I don't know, but I've spoken to some of the people that knows the building and some people who knows architecture who I don't claim to be in that part of the world or to know. But it was believed that no matter what kind of force can go against those towers, they could not come down. But anything that is made of man, it has a limited time upon the face of it. The world, or when they were building those towers in New York, we were told these are the strongest towers in the world, that they can never come down. It shook the whole world to find out how two planes brought those towers down. Nobody imagined that a thing was going to happen. In my imagination, after speaking to different people that are qualified to understand architecture and building and things like that, I came to the conclusion of knowing anything that man makes, it has a limited time. But the only thing that God makes has unlimited time. And that's why this morning as we are singing this song, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus, you are everything that I need. Because once your heart is leaned to God, there's no way anything can bring you down. There's nothing that can make you come down. Amen? The rich man feels that his wealth may afford him comfort. I believe you and I, we know rich people around the world. And we know that money to them, that's everything. <clears throat> Not too long ago, I was a member of a jury, in the jury juries, for the federal case here in the United States. And I, I'm reminded to see how many people they can go and buy the system by getting the best lawyers with their money. But nobody can buy the system of God. Amen. If you try to sue him, his wealth can secure him an advocate. That's what a rich man is. When he needs help with his dangerous, his servants should be at his call. A rich man just snaps the finger. And then the 
servants they run. His strong power, his strong tower is in his wealth. But there is a contrast to what the Bible says in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 24. Lamentation tells us very clear that God, the righteous man, finds his wealth in God. And all his wealth and his substance is in God. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I'll wait for him. The Bible tells us, they that word, wait upon the Lord, they shall have their strength in what? Renew. Renew. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and never fail. But the problem that we have these days is that people, they put their trust in the system of the world rather than putting their trust in God. How many people have put their trust for their marriage in their system? The only one who can secure any marriage is Jesus. The Lord is our sure foundation. Isaiah 28 verse 6 tells us, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, and the line that way, a tribe stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Those that believe, why do we lay our trust today? Do we lay our trust in the system of this world? Do we lay our trust in men? Do we lay our trust in people who we know? Or we lay our trust in God. Today, dear brethren, I want to encourage each and every one of us today. Let's lay our trust in God. As we lay our trust in God, we shall see what God is able to do and accomplish on our behalf. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God is standing. Sure. The foundation of God does what? Stands. Sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let it, everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Having the seal. Now there's one thing, as I was preparing this message that came to my mind. Whenever you see the seal of the United States, on a podium, you know that the president of the United States is going to come and speak there. Not the speaker of the house, not the vice president, not anyone, but the president of these United States. Why? Because he has been voted and he has the mandate to stand on that. <coughs> but now, the Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having the seal. You and I, we're not standing on the foundation of men. We're standing on the foundation of God. And the very moment when we begin to walk, there is a seal that once the devil sees, that those seal says, you cannot touch this, belongs to God. You are divinely protected by that seal that God puts upon your life. That's why you find there can be difficult moments, there can be a storm, but God has a certain way how he protects his children. What do you think makes a difference to, from a child of God to a person who is not saved? What do you think is? It's because the child of God has something that signifies when the devil looks at the child of God, the devil knows that this one is protected. The reason why your battles are more difficult and hard is because the devil comes at you with every force. Because he knows you don't belong to him. And when he comes, he mobilizes, he brings all the legion demons because he knows we are going for war. At that moment when the battle begins to rage against you, you know what happens? God releases the troops of heaven, the angels, the archangels. They come and they show the devil the seal that has been placed upon you on the day of your salvation that you belong to Jesus Christ and the devil has no power over your life. So don't get it twisted or don't panic when the enemy comes to attack you. It's because the devil doesn't come in the way how he can come to a person who is 
is a heathen out there. The devil knows heathens that belong to him. But the devil knows also that children of God that belong to God. So when he comes to you, he's not going to come in a form of weakling. He's going to come to foreign legion demons. And he's going to do everything that he can do to seize you. But I want to let you know today, walk boldly, walk righteously, walk victorious. Remember, greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. You have the weapons of victory upon you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The greatest God that is sealed you, that has put that seal upon your life, who would not let you, he would not let you be defeated. You are an overcomer. You are
to come and pray with me when I was going through. A man of God almost was reading my eulogy. David, when you die, you have left a legacy. <coughs> I told Ruth, get this man out of my house. <laughs> Who sent him here? Yeah. He's, he had already seen me in the grave. <laughs> he didn't even see life. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to hear how victorious our God is. We don't have to give up. We have to show, let's go where the devil is and face him boldly and face to face. For greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. We got the Lion of Judah lying inside us. You know, how many of us these days, some of the things that we see here in America, and we call them, they, this is schizophrenic, it's a demon spirit. We just needed to call. These days, they have put a lot of terminology. This is this, this is this, just to make money. That's all the work of science. What about calling the demon the way I is and they say, I command you Satan in Jesus' name. Get out of here. Amen. Amen. What do you think Jesus would have done in our generation now? Seeing a man with a legion demon coming over to him, what do you think he would have kind of said? This is schizophrenic spirit that is tearing him up. He needed a mentor in sin, no? Jesus just rebuked him, and the demons that was in that man began to cry out, Where do we go? They're begging Jesus to find a place to go. Do you think there is that kind of an anointing in our generation now? Yes. Why don't we use it if that anointing is there? It's because the church has slackened in the way how they pray. Jesus was Lord, and he rose at hours of the morning, and went in a certain confined place, and prayed to the Father, who was able to hear him, and deliver him from all agonies. And you and I, these days, we only pray for two minutes. The Bible says about when Jesus was praying, his sweat looked as if it was blood. And as he began to pray, things that began to change. Here is God, who have tamed to be an incarnate man, who was there with the Father before the foundation of the earth. But now he is born in this world. He has changed his life to the point whereby he is teaching us. Everything that Jesus was doing is to teach humankind that this is the way how you are going to live when I'm gone. How are we going to face tangents and tumults and difficult things? We get to get down on our knees and pray. Prayer without doubting. Prayer answers all things. What if I'm faced with trying times? Praise God for trying times. Before the trying times was there, there was a Jesus. I said, before the trying times came, there was who? Jesus. How are you feeling? Because I'm going through some difficult moment. Amen. Jesus is about to sort something. Let him come forth, show himself, and show out, and break forth. One day I went to a man of God. I, I said to the man of God, you know, I said, I'm not feeling well, I'm so sick. I'm telling you, I thought that man was so cruel. When I walked in his church, I was so upset. He just came and hit me on my shoulder. He says, come on, rise up, you less Christian. I said, what do you mean? I said, can you pray for me? He says, no, come on. Come in the house of the Lord. Let's have some time to praise God. You know, I went in that house of God with an attitude. I was ready, you know, and I was just waiting. I said, the pastor says one more thing about me, I'm going to answer you. <laughs> I was just prepared because I felt, how come the pastor doesn't see the position that I am? And when we reached over there, the praise began to go up. This man began to preach. By the time I was going out, I couldn't feel the fever. I couldn't feel the pain. I couldn't feel the headache. I said, what? I was lazy. At that moment, I knew that this man told me that I need to fall.
focus on Jesus as the center of my life. What are your fears today? Give them to Jesus. Is it the fear of rejection? Give it to Jesus. Is it the fear of failure? Give it to Jesus. Is it the fear of disappointment? Give it to Jesus. If it, is it the fear of the marriage? Give it to Jesus. Whatever you are going through right now, just throw your hands and begin to praise Him. Walk around and begin to call the name of Jesus and begin to magnify Him. You're going to see the power of living God. Amen. Amen. One of my friends, he saw a man who came when we were living in Africa, who came from Congo. And this man didn't know how to speak any Zambian language. He didn't know how to speak English, but he only knew how to speak French and Lingala. There were people there that knew how to speak Swahili, but there was no people that knew how to speak French or Lingala. And then he told the man, he said, Sir, God told me you'll preach. He says, What am I going to preach myself? He says, No, you're going to be the one who's going to preach. He says, What am I going to preach? He says, I want you to preach the word of God. He says, Look, you and I, we can hardly understand each other. You think the congregation you were just speaking little broken English. You couldn't even hear anything. The man stood on the pulpit with courage and boldness. And he says, today I have three messages. And everybody in the church says, what? Three messages? He says, my first message is Jesus. And people, they are waiting, what is the second message? Then he said, said the second message is Jesus. Yes. And he moved around, he passed around. He said, my third message is Jesus. Then he says, this is where I end. The man, as he was trying to step down, to go and sit down, everybody ran to the front and they began to call Jesus. The pastor said, that's the greatest message that you ever preached. He says, again tomorrow. The revival broke out. Do you know that name of Jesus can cause pandemonium to the kingdom of death? Saints, I want to let you know, how many of us today are living in depression, fear, isolation. We don't understand what the enemy has done. But today, I want to encourage you, lift that name of Jesus. I'm believing God that we need to walk in this land and to demonstrate that we are the children of God and to declare the hand of the, God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let his glory be revealed. When people they see us, let us stand firm. We need to take authority over the things of this world so that they can understand who we are. Is it the fear of deja vu situations, feeling a fear of falling in the same trap again? Is deja vu that has happened again? Jesus is here to heal the broken heart. Jesus is here to give strength to those who are weak. Jesus is here to bring that which the conqueror, the caterpillar, the locust, the pommel has eaten, is here to bring it back. It's yours. Jesus is here to guide the one who has lost his way. You don't even understand where you're going, where you're heading. Jesus will guide you. Jesus is here to give you the hope to the hopeless. Jesus is here to take away all your fears and the worries. You are worried. You don't know how to solve these things. You are praying. All what you need to do is to simply say, Jesus, I'm confused. Right now, sort this out. And you see how you sort it for you. Jesus is here to take all your fears, what is it that is pushing you down? You feel like you are drowning. You feel like you have got no more life. Jesus is here to give you that. Jesus is here to walk with you every step of the way. Every step of the way. That's why I like, I don't know who wrote the pamphlet, that it says, when the man was walking at the beach with Jesus, and as they were walking, Whenever everything is okay, they will see the four footsteps. Whenever there is the wind and the storm, they could only see two footsteps. And the man actually says, Jesus, I'm so confused. Whenever I'm walking in the storm, I don't see two footsteps. I see one foot, you know, only one, one footstep, the two footsteps. I don't see four of them. What is happening? Jesus said to this man, he says, look here, my friend. In this storm, I carry you. Yes. The footsteps that you see, they are not yours, they are mine. You can never be able to walk in this storm without me carrying you. Saints, if you're in the storm today, 
I want to encourage each and every one of us. Jesus is coming. Oh, hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me here? I don't know what the storm you're going through, but Jesus is holding you. He's holding you like that little tender child. He can never let you down. It's time for you to begin to praise God because he's able to fight the battles that you can never fight. He's able to conquer the armies of this world, combine the genius and all kinds of other nations, bring them all together. They battle at the name of Jesus Christ. That's why when the sky shall spread in two and the loudest trumpet shall sound in the heavens, not a military on this earth, not a nuclear weapon will ever be active. Why? Everything shall melt. Because the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, the only one, the true Messiah, the foundation of all things, where things that come and hold together shall be there to pray. Today, I want you to give Jesus all the glory and the honor. How many love Jesus? I love him. Is it the fear of losing your relatives, your jobs, your investment? Many people at one time put all their trust in Ben Madoff. And where is Ben Madoff today? He's somewhere in a federal penitentiary pen, 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 in North Carolina. But people have invested all their resources. In fact, one of our members of the church, when we lived in Florida, he came and contacted me because he wanted me to contact a gentleman who had a lot of resources. He says, you tell your friend, you know, this is where we put the money. And I was about to pick the phone, but Ruth told me, don't try. Maybe this is a scheme. I was about to tell my friend about the greatest resources and finding out this man says, it was Benny Madoff, Brother Shaman. Just imagine how many people they are doomed in this world. Many people lose their homes. People have lost cars through repossession. Many they lose their friends. Marriages are torn apart every day. Lose business partners because of greed. And some even commit suicide. But today I want to encourage you. Put your trust and your faith in God. Where is your trust today? Some of their trust is in Vegas. Hoping one day I'm going to go there and hit a jackpot. When I pull that slot there, millions will come. You know, I've seen so many people who have come and cried at me. I said, preacher, I went over there thinking. I said, I kept on putting money. You know, the devil knows how to bet you. You put some little money, there's 2,000 that come. And you get that 2,000 instead of saying, let me pocket it. You put some more money until the whole 2,000 is gone. Then you go back where you even begin to dip 20,000, 50,000. And you leave that place Sunday morning, you're the most lonely, miserable person that there is in the world. Because you have been pulling a sweat and that thing has been taken. Sometimes, there are few people that win there, but there are few people that make the casinos more rich. <laughs> Is it in the government too bad? Gas price is going up. When I checked yesterday, my gas was, my goodness, it's constantly going up. What are we going to do? Is it in the Republican and Democrat 